In this lesson, we're going to look at the internal element or mens rea in relation to a crime or the elements of a crime. Now, there are several factors in relation to the mental state or intent component of a crime. On the one hand, you have the intention, which relates to the consequence or the state of mind. You have recklessness, where an individual knows there's a risk and that there is a probability of something bad happening, regardless, continues anyway. You have knowledge as well in relation to the circumstances. This might be in relation to an omission as well. It must be noted, however, that negligence does not equate to mens rea, unless, of course, there is a duty imposed on the defendant himself. When we consider intention, you can have either direct or indirect intention. What do I mean by this? A defendant might primarily intend for a particular act to happen, as in A wishes to kill B. He knows exactly what has to be done, plans it, as well as executes it. But the intention of doing so is direct. Therefore, in pursuance of this act, he had done something. Indirect intention or oblique intention, on the other hand, means that the defendant could have foreseen or foresaw the consequence of certain actions, while he may not have officiously intended for that final act to occur, he was able to foresee it. Now conversely, as we considered earlier, recklessness is a wholly different component and there has been debate in relation to whether it must be considered subjectively or objectively. Have a look at cases like R. and Cunningham as well as R. and G, specifically R. and G in relation to the 11 and 12 year old kids in relation to criminal damage. Now, there are a few key facts that we must keep in mind, both when we are answering questions as well as considering the mens rea component of an offense. Firstly, murder, a person must intend to do so. There must be intention. It cannot be either recklessness or by virtue of negligence, in which case it would fall under a different category, not murder. And mens rea or the actual intent or the internal element of an offense is determined as a state of mind prescribed by law. There are instances also, thirdly, where offenses without mens rea or negligence occurs and these are considered as strict liability offenses, something that we had a look at early on in this introduction uh, in relation to the actus reus component. So this was a brief introduction in relation to mens rea or the internal element in relation to determining if a crime has been committed where we looked at the differentiation between intention, recklessness and knowledge, partially looking at negligence not having a component of mens rea unless there is a duty imposed, the various types of intention being direct and indirect, recklessness having been subjective in nature as held in RNG, as well as a few key facts such as murder having had to be intended to be done, as well as mens rea or that component of a particular offense as a state of mind being prescribed by law and strict liability offenses not having the need for any mens rea or negligence. Mind you, each and every element that we have discussed here in this introduction thus far is an overview and a summary and it's utilized so that a basic concrete grounding is laid out before we go into the spider graphs for each individual offense such as homicide, sexual offenses, assault and so on. In the next lesson, we will look at a myriad of defenses that a defendant might plead. Hi, my name is Shabin Bandar Nayaka. Thanks a lot for watching this video on YouTube. For the complete course, make sure you click the link on the left. Also, for an exclusive discount to YouTube viewers, enter the coupon code YouTube at the course page. All the very best with your studies and good luck with your exams. See you in the next lesson.